to President Biden's scheduled meeting with Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu after the Israeli Prime Minister's speech to Congress defending the war in Gaza with protesters outside. Our chief national correspondent, Matt Gutman, is there outside the Capitol this morning. Good morning, Matt. Hey, good morning, Rebecca. Ahead of this address, there was some anticipation that Netanyahu might announce some progress on that stalled ceasefire and hostage release deal. But that's not what we heard from the Israeli prime minister. Instead, there was this full-throated defense of Israel's conduct in the Gaza Strip. And amidst this historic address, there was also massive security with thousands of protesters outside demanding his arrest for war crimes. Outside the capital, thousands protesting Netanyahu's visit, clashing with police facing volleys of pepper spray. Eventually, the march stalling at Union Station, where protesters took down American flags and raised Palestinian ones. The flag there on the ground was on the flagpole here at Union Station a few moments ago, but protesters here lit it on fire, as well as that effigy of Benjamin Netanyahu. But inside the capital, the Israeli prime minister greeted with a roaring, mostly Republican ovation. Some prominent Democrats like Nancy Pelosi skipped the speech, and those who did attend, like Chuck Schumer, notably cold to the prime minister, and others outright hostile. But Netanyahu undeterred, vigorously defending Israel's response to Hamas's October 7th rampage. Israel will fight until we destroy Hamas's military capabilities and its rule in Gaza and bring all our hostages home. That's what total victory means, and we will settle for nothing less. Netanyahu never mentioned the word ceasefire, despite 39,000 Palestinians killed, according to the Hamas-run health ministry, and hundreds of thousands starving. But the first public appearance of rescued Israeli hostage Noah Argamani, brutally kidnapped from a music festival on October 7th, was the emotional touchstone Netanyahu needed to plead for more help from the Americans. Today, as Israel fights on the front line of civilization, I too appeal to America. Give us the tools faster, and we'll finish the job faster. Later today, Netanyahu will meet with Vice President Harris. He'll also meet with President Biden. From both of them, he is likely going to be urged to make more progress on that ceasefire deal and hostage release, which has essentially been stalled for a couple of months now. And then tomorrow, he'll travel to Florida to meet with former President Trump at Mar-a-Lago. Robin. All right, Matt. Thank you.